Hey guys, it's Johnny Gilbert with Stainless Diesel. I'm here to talk to you about our Stainless Diesel Spring Gates. I get quite a bit of questions about these items right here. Um, the S300 Spring Gate, we came up with about 10 plus years ago, roughly. Uh, it was designed for twin turbo applications initially. Uh, let me grab a little canister here for you. We also have them for the 351 uh turbos when we did twin turbo kits so what it does is it basically actuates the wastegate flipper in place of one of these canister style wastegates so what these do you put a little preload on it there's a spring in here and a diaphragm and when boost hits this it blows open at a set boost point depending on how much preload you have on this spring so it's essentially very similar to one of these but without the air and diaphragm blowing it open at a set boost so why do we do that the reason why we do that is because in a twin turbo application um, it actuates with dry pressure when you're in the lower boost ranges and the lower part throttle operations that you had a big heavy trailer on you're merging with traffic when you have the canister style wastegate and it's say preset to 25 pounds or thereabouts it blows open and then you get kind of a laggy hot spot right there so you with a heavy trailer on you either have to power through it watch your egt's climb uh, crazy until you can catch up with uh, cooling things back down or back out of it so your egt's don't get too hot so what the spring gate does is it blows open with exhaust pressure when exhaust pressure is high. So at the lower RPM ranges, lower boost range, your dry pressure is relatively low right there. So our spring gate makes a smoother transition. Uh, when it does open, you don't even feel when it's opening that's that smooth. Where if one of these blows open, you get kind of a laggy, uh, truck just kind of lays over and it gets laggy, smoky, hot, EGTs until you either power through it or lift off the pedal. And that's something we realized about 10 years ago doing twin turbo kits. Like how do we get away how do you get out of that so my first unit i played with was with a small block chevy valve spring um, on a little homemade piece of angle iron bracket and we did a bunch of testing and came up with a few different spring rates um, one of the questions we get is what's the difference between the twin turbo spring or the single turbo spring well there's your difference right here basically when it is in the bracket, a really easy way to tell is the long spring basically sticks out of the bracket, and which is the single turbo spring. So a higher pressure operation. The twin spring is essentially almost flush with this on install. So that's how you know if you have a twin spring. So the, it's a lighter spring rate as opposed to the longer one, which is a bit heavier spring rate for the higher pressure single application. So twin turbo springs generally will work from that five pounds up to about 35 pounds-ish, 40 pounds on the high side. The single turbo spring works really well from about 20 pounds, 25 pounds up to about 70 pounds in that range of operation before you're bottoming things out and not being in correctly in adjustment. What I'm gonna do here is show you how it fits and how we set up our adjustment. Uh, for the single or the twin. So real simple. Uh, basically we take the bracket and if you take your canister wastegate off, you can take the same screws and put the bracket on here first. And this is nice stainless bracket, um, all one piece stainless. And it is swedged in here, all machined nice. This is the stainless little clevis, and let me grab the Allen here. So what we do is stack it up just like that. So there's a jam nut here, it takes 13 millimeter wrench, and I'll show you what that does here and why it's on there. So the little arm has a little notch out so you'll notice how the casting comes around there's a few different variations of castings um, sometimes we'll grind down some of the casting here to make it fit a little better just depends on what housing it is 
13 millimeter wrench, tighten her up, and you're good to go. So. All right. So basically, when you're adjusting these things, um, you know, get all the slack out. So when it's real loose, it's just gonna be you know, slopping around in there. So tighten it up to where you feel the spring um, just to start to compress. And that's kind of our, that's our starting point that we like to, like to start from. And our base setting is five and a half turns in from the time it starts to compress the spring. So all the slacks out of it. And that's just a good starting point. Works really well. One, two, three, four, five and a half. So then take your jam nut, run it down. Like I said, 13 millimeter wrench, lock it down. So that's your base setting on both springs, whether it's the single spring or the twin spring. That, that will get you in that 45 pound boost range. Um, every truck's a little different, you know, drive pressure, turbine wheel size, uh, tuning wise, timing, uh, how aggressive the fueling comes in, things like that. So a little bit, it gets you right there in the, I was going to say probably about 80% of the people, that's, that's a sweet spot. Um, there are some cases where you want to adjust this thing. So how we adjust it, and there's some questions that arise here. Um, so if you are tightening this up on a twin turbo application, you're thinking in your mind, you know, more boost, all that good stuff. Well, the reason why you want the spring gate to open as soon as possible in a twin turbo setup is so that you can get all the thermal energy to bypass your smaller wheel here, to go through the wastegate mechanism, out the exhaust, and into the big turbo to drive it harder. So if you shut this down, what happens? You can't get wastegate flow to drive the big turbo. So people get confused, say, hey, Johnny, um, man, I'm making, making 80 pounds of boost, but the big turbo is only making 20. I'm like, okay, where's the spring gate set? Oh man, it's all the way tight. I, I can't get no more boost out of this thing. And I'm like, well, back it off, get your base setting, call me back. So typically what we like to see in our twin turbo kit with the spring gate, all that stuff is about half the pressure out of the big turbo. We, the way we make our hot pipe really short, it's to keep all the heat in that hot pipe for a short distance to drive that big turbo. So heat drives the turbo. A lot of people think it's, you know, the flow, which to a point, it's definitely flow related, but the thermal energy is what drives that turbine wheel. So the more we can get to the big turbo around the small turbine wheel, that's where the twin turbos shine. You get that spool up. So you want this thing tight enough so that it's not laggy to spool, but loose enough so that it opens as soon as possible to drive that big turbo to full boost and the goal here is to get half of your total boost out of that big turbo. And then our piping kit, and we put a little bung, an uh, eighth inch bung, so you can run two gauges, like a 60 pound gauge and say a 100 pound gauge. And that's the spring gate for the S300 in a nutshell, and kind of why we do it, what we use it for. The single spring essentially is the same way, base setting's the same. Um, and like I said, it'll, it'll work up the higher pressures on 60, 65 pounds up towards 70 pounds and then if you get an s300 up in that range longevity is going to be affected uh, at some point so that's kind of how that goes now i'm going to walk over this way and we're going to talk about the other spring gate that we do okay so what we have here is an he351 this happens to be one of our Boss Series turbos, so 63, 67. And uh, these other parts here, they are parts of a twin turbo spring gate. So if you take your actuator here off and you're wanting to do a twin turbo, generally you have to uh, take the housing, clock this thing and rotate it around, and I'll show you what happens. So when you put it on a twin turbo setup and you flip it on a manifold and kind of get things oriented, uh, you'll notice that you know this is the way the housings come from the factory. 
clock this way so it goes on its stock truck location third gen manifold so you want to put one of these on a twin turbo truck with second gen manifold a lot of guys kind of do that setup so you have to take the actuator off and you have to clock this bad boy in a different orientation which would be right about roughly there so you'll notice that the, the actuator over here doesn't line up with where this would have been so that's where this little bracket comes in we make this little twin turbo spring gate kit basically that bolts on there and I'm gonna kind of show you how that works without getting too crazy but we send two two gaskets essentially um, one on each side of the bracket the bolts kind of go in and this thing goes on to the oil drain setup so whoop. so pretend like we bolted on the oil drain with this and this is kind of how this goes so there's an oil drain tube like our twin turbo Cummins oil drain line it's that flexible uh, stainless steel set up here we, we typically use those good oil drain size works really well basically with the housing clocked around what we're going to do here is here's your flipper it's very similar so to what we did earlier so our jam nut goes on clevis goes on and then when this thing gets clocked correctly um, which is yeah right about there and I need a clip there it goes okay so this is generally how it goes on you're gonna notice that same same situation we like to tighten it up about uh, five and a half turns in from from the time it starts to compress that's a good starting point and uh, you know, once you're don't forget for the old V bin to be on there as well but this is just a quickie mock-up deal um, a lot of guys that do this will plug this port off that was going to the canister wastegate and a lot of times they'll get the little billet plugs to go into where the old uh, actuator went to sometimes and sometimes they uh, keep the factory little uh, wastegate sensor in there keep the computer happy and whatnot so there's the two differences um, two different styles anyway just remember this one does not work in a stock third gen manifold bolt-on location this is specifically designed for twin turbo location so second gen manifold flipped up in a twin turbo location um, there's a few different people out there that make the piping differently but typically um, this would work with the covers over here or swung over here a lot of different areas you can clock this thing and still use the spring gate on a second gen manifold when you get time go to the uh, bottom of our stainlessdiesel.com home page and look up instructions bottom of bottom of the page there and you can see he 351 uh, spring gate instructions so as well as some other stuff twin turbo instructions anything else you need there so make sure to check it out I can redo that. All right, guys, that's the spring gates in a nutshell. Let me know what you think. If you got any more questions, definitely drop comments below. Share it with your buddies that might have the same questions that I just answered. And if you got any more ideas, you'd like to see some things and you have questions, uh, let us know. Be happy to do some more of these. Thanks, guys.